Excellent. Debbie, what's this next section about? This is using iMessages. So, so often when our kids are doing stuff, like for example, in your workbook, those of you that have it, it's an example of the child who's blasting the stereo and the mom keeps saying, turn it off, turn it off. And then he'll finally turn it down a little because she'll say, turn it down or it's gonna go up and he'll turn it down. And then 10 minutes later, she, he, um, <clears throat> he has it turned back up again. And so then she screams, you're gonna lose the whole stereo or whatever. So this kind of communication is ineffective. So instead we wanna do an iMessage. So a more effective way is to use an iMessage. An iMessage, you fill in the blank, I feel blank. Jody's gonna be writing furiously, right Jody? I yeah. feel blank when blank happens because blank. This is, I'm reading out of your workbook too, you guys. You actually have this form in your workbook. So those of you that, with the workbook, you don't have to worry about this. And I would like blank, okay? And those of you with the workbook, cross off the next statement that says, are you willing to do that? Cross that out. <laughs> I don't know why they put that in there. I, to me, it's not an, are you willing to do that? You, in order to say that, you have to be okay with the answer, no. And in this case, it's not, no, it's not okay. Okay, so with the stereo, it's like, I feel upset when the stereo is too loud because, and I, it's how it impacts me, because I get a headache from loud music I want you to turn it down to a three or lower, please. And that's it. That's how you use iMessages. It's a complete reversal of how we've communicated before where we say, you're always this and you're doing that. And why don't you blah, blah, blah. And so they get defensive and they don't respond. Um, did anybody, I, I should have put this out earlier. Has anybody filled out this? Um, I put a little thing in the private Facebook group if anybody had a chance to go do this worksheet that you could share. Um, what I like to do is have you fill out this worksheet and then have a few people share it because it's really easy to put a hidden you in here. And a hidden you would look like, I feel upset because you're never listening to me. <laughs> okay, that's a hidden you. It's I feel upset and then you describe the behavior. I feel upset because the stereo is too loud. So you, there's a difference between saying you're playing the stereo too loud and the stereo is too loud. Okay, because they get really defensive if you say you instead of um, just explaining the situation. Jody, what do I do here? Because I forgot to set up if anybody had this workbook sheet complete. Should I just? Um... Everybody can just do it now. Okay. I typed it in the chat and we can repeat it if they're driving or don't have a piece of paper or anything. What would you like them to do? Oh, and I love, it. I'm just looking at the chat. Katie said she learned this in her early child development course. And it's funny, I had it in marriage counseling too. And we had it on the refrigerator. So when you blank, I feel blank and I want blank was the marriage counseling version. And I used to do that all the time, like, I, cause I wanted to yell at him about something and I would go and fill in the, the situation. So yes, it's a very effective communication tool that the um, counselors give us as well. And um, let's see, yeah, Katie. Well, said especially if you're doing power struggles, you're not telling the other person what they're doing. You're saying, you're claiming what it's doing to you. And, and that just um, takes away a lot of the the loose edges, right? Because they right. can't deny what it is that you're feeling and what you're experiencing. Okay, look at Amanda. Read Amanda's. I just saw that part. So Amanda says, I feel annoyed when I step on Legos because it hurts my feet. I would like them to be moved out of the walking path. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. <laughs> no bad people involved in that scenario, just painful feet. Yeah, and it was a pretty clear directive at the end, end there too, because a lot of times parents will go on and on too much. And I think that was, I want to move off the path. That's perfect. So um, yeah, that's exactly how to use them, Amanda. Good job. So all of you, okay, read this next one. Okay, I feel disrespected when I don't get a response to my question because I lose time. I would like an answer. I like that one. And that could be a little tricky. <laughs> 
when I don't get an answer, yeah, I mean, there, there, that might foster a little bit of a power struggle, but that's, I think that's as good as you can get without having a specific, um, it wasn't like something was in the way, like you're talking about communication there too, communication there. And so I think that's what might trip you up with that one. But I think you spoke it as clearly and concisely. So Julia, try that one out and let us know how it goes. <laughs> And I would say practice with these, write down five of them. Don't yeah. get attached to one, write down five different ways you can address what it is that's upsetting about this scenario or different scenarios, but let yourself rehearse them because, so that they become okay. fluent in it. Yeah, is there, read a couple more. I really like these, thank you guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel disrespected when I hear bad words because it hurts my feelings. I would like better words that communicate your emotions. Whoo, sweet. Yeah, that was good. I like that. Awesome. Yes. I feel sad when I'm spoken to with unkind words. I would like to hear kind words. Oh, yes. Yes. And you can see these are not just children specific. This is human nature. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a great experience. I feel angry when I see toys not all tidied up. I would love to see them tidied up after they are used. That one is interesting to me. I don't know how old the kids are. I didn't see who posted that. Um, think, I wonder if there's a more clear, you know, tidy toys to you is going to be a different definition than tidy toys to a kid. So see if there's a more clear way, like toys put away or toys in the toy bucket or, you know, something that's a little more clear. Because I, I, if I say to like Michelle, go clean the bathroom, like clean to her is a swish and a go. <laughs> I have a different version. Yeah, go ahead, Jen. Maybe I would love this. I, we're going to wrap up in just a moment, um, okay. but this one is specific because I know you have it too. My son makes a really high pitched screeching sound. How do I, how do I say it? My ears hurt when you make high pitched sounds. How you have this? One of your okay, this. I'm going to have to use this one. So when you screech. I feel pain. <laughs> is that a feeling? Is feeling a pain? I feel, yeah, I feel, well, actually, I feel angry because it hurts my head. And I want you to keep the volume down. And then you also have some consequences, but we'll get into that later this yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, I was actually working on this this morning and I was being physical. Like I, I said, look, if you, if you need to screech, we're, I'm going to, I'm going to actually pick you up Arlo and take you out in the backyard. And that's what I was doing. And we had a little game going of it and it, but it was working and I didn't lock him out or anything like that. It was just like a removing him from the situation and putting him away. And um, it actually worked after about three of those, um, he quit screeching. So um yeah, that one's taking a lot of different <laughs> approaches from me. <laughs> These are really great. The, the chat is filling up. So if you don't know how to verbalize yours that you've got going on, <laughs> check out the chat. Uh, Debbie, you want to tell us what's coming up in the rest of the week? Just some yeah, big so, topics. I know. This is great. So we're all week is uh, alternatives to punishment. So tomorrow we're going to do natural consequences. Some of you may have been on that call that we did uh, before we even started this class. I did a day of natural consequences because this is one of my favorite topics. I love teaching natural consequences. So that's tomorrow. Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to be covering logical consequences. So logical consequences are in your workbook and there's like four pages of information. So we're taking two days to learn about logical consequences. So that is what's coming up. Yes. And there was a person who wrote in the chat about a teenager needing some consequences. And so that's coming up. Oh, later right. this week. Yes. So we hope you will stay tuned <laughs> and join us. Uh, and with that, I will, um, let's see, here it is. Let everybody unmute themselves and say good night and goodbye. And thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need help. Debbie, I have something Bye. to say. Bye. Hey, I have something to say Bye. really quick. 
Um, the Zoom, when we got Zoom bombed, I had to go onto my Gmail. And so if you check your security settings, it does say that Zoom may have access into your Gmail. So make sure to go to your security set settings and un unclick it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I yeah, no worries. I changed, you, I changed my password and everything just in case. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, bye. Have a nice one. Bye, thank you. Bye, Jackie. Bye, bye Fred. Bye, bye, Courtney and your little one. Oh, I gotta go. Phone's ringing. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.